Mashijade celebrations in Kericho Green Stadium presented a national platform for William Samoy Ruto to hit his deputy Rigadi Gashagwa using the unending debate on shareholding. Kutoka counties zote, kutoka pembe zote za Kenya, ya kwamba hakuna mkenya atabaguliwa na serekali ya Kenya kwa misingi ya kabila, dini, ama siyasa. Sisi ni ndugu moja, wataifa moja, with a common destiny as a people of Kenya. Na mimi nataka ni wakikishie ya kwamba chukumu letu bali na kuunganisha wa Kenya ni kuhakikisha ya kwamba tunabadilisha taifa letu kwa miradi na mipango ya maendeleo. Nataka ni wakikishie ya kwamba sote tutaungana tutafanya kazi kwa pamoja na wauliza ndugu zangu wa Kenya kila mmoja wetu ile kazi unafanya ujue ya kwamba hiyo kazi unafanya usihesabu ni kazi ndogo now in this podcast we are going to look at why this debate seems not to be ending because there is a rebuttal from mount kenya and regarding shagwa's home governor mutahi kahiga the governor who vouches or rather who projects himself as the elder or rather the chairperson of all the Mount Kenya governors is daring President Ruto to repeat that statement speaking somewhere in Mount Kenya. Why would there be any difference? What is the problem? They are, I mean, <laughs> I do not know. Maybe it comes from the statements that were made by the president in, uh, in, in, in Nyanza. And I personally have said, Mr. President, I know that was all politics. If it wasn't, let's hear it repeated in the mountain. The president was here for six days. He never raised those issues. He never spoke about them. And he is instead, he is the, the, the bastion and the figure of unity for this country. We contributed 47% of the votes in, uh, that put the Kenya Kwanza government into power. We have no apologies to make for it. Every voter had his share certificate. They casted their share somewhere. We casted with Kenya Kwanza. We must see the dividends of their votes. And I don't know. Then that seems to be, this seems to be showing something. The governor cannot make such a statement, or rather cannot make that statement without the knowledge of Rigadi Geshagwa. And it points out clearly that Rigadi is still better. And you know, there is one thing I still don't understand to date. Was it uh, the clamor for Ruta to denounce that shareholding? That clamor, because that statement was made some few months ago, I think more than one year ago. But they've been quiet about it because by then it was politically convenient. And I remember, I remember saying in this podcast that the shareholding, President Tutu just wanted to, just used it. But there seems to be something happening behind the scene. It was started in Kakamega when Silvanus Osoro actually made the electrifying speech shocking Regadi Geshagwa by saying clearly, and of course it was, they clearly used someone not even from Mount Kenya to start denouncing. And remember, um, Osoro making this speech while speaking somewhere in Kakamega. Ikitu ya shea sasa mwache. Wa Kenya wote tukondani ya serikali ya Kenya. Manana ya kusema unajua isemu, shares, sijui nini, shea yote, sisi wa Kenya wote tukondani ya shares za Kenya. Na sisi wote tutataka kuhusishwa katika kazi ya maendeleo. Wakati mweshimiwa wa hapa anatembea kuomba vitu serikalini, anaenda kuomba kama mkenya. Ile wakati wa honeymoon imeisha. Shere imeisha. One year imeisha. Manana ya kukuja siku hizi kusimama hapa, tusimame sisi kama viongozi wa Kenya kwanza, 
tuanze tu kujipiga kifua na kusema tulishinda wale ama tulishinda wale imeisha sasa wananchi wanataka kuona barabara wanataka kuona stima wanataka kuona umoja wanataka kuona mashule zimejengwa ama namna gani wakati huu sasa tuache hii maneno ya kifua mukisimama ambia watu vile tumepanga kwa mfano ukisimama hapa ambia watu tumeajiri walimu 56000 kwa mwaka mmoja hiyo ndio unataka kusikia waambie hii shule vile umepeana milioni tatu Moses Kuria yuko hapa na mimi pia nitaenda niongee na mheshimiwa Machogu waziri wa education aongeze pesa zingine hapa kwa hii shule hiyo ndio vitu watu wanataka kusikia maneno mengine ya maneno oh, unajua sisi tumepanga share oh uko na share wewe share yako kaa nayo sisi wote tunajua tunalipa tax na sisi wote tuko ndani ya serikali kila mtu yuko ndani ama namna gani hatuwezi anza kuongea maneno ya past tense share ya kitambo imeisha share ya 2022 imeisha saa hii watu wameanza kutengeneza kama kuna share basi wanaangalia share ya 2027 na share ya 2022 2032 hiyo sasa ya kitambo wacha na ndio mkiona gavana wetu akiingia hii sehemu wacha pia ingie ndiye ajipange na kule mbele mkiona hawa viongozi wote wakiingia waingie wakienda mbele nimesikia women rep wetu ukisema hata mheshimiwa paranya ingie tuendelee sisi wote mbele ndio Kenya yetu ikuwe na amani tushikane pamoja bila fujo ndio tukuwe na upendo pamoja sina mna hiyo wenzangu and that is why after that it did not end you will see Moses Kuria also joining the queue while launching uh, the industrial parks by uh, visiting different country counties especially when he was still the cabinet secretary in charge of trade uh, i remember he made it in nyanza where he uh, it was made in siaya in kisi and garissa so it's something that was going on and in this podcast as for us because that is the big debate i want to look at why it's a big concern but let's put it in a context you know in the bold podcast before we reach to before we get to the gist of uh, why it's a concern there is this segment of the context so it's happening in a context and these are the three contexts why i want us to how i want us to put it number one, there is a current difference that is emerging between Ruto and Rigathi on UDA party. Rigathi Gashagwa wants Secretary General of UDA party to come from Mount Kenya. And number two, there are also quarters that want the grassroots elections to be done at a later date. They're saying it's early. But there is William Ruto camp that are supporting Cleophas Malala and also wants the UDA grassroots elections to be done in December. So another meeting is slated. So that has pointed out on a scramble for UDA party. Number two, the government is already facing hostility about, and that hostility is becoming because of a lot of unmet pledges, or rather unmet promises. You could see a Jackson Olesa Pitt leading the clarity, the clergy voice asking William Ruto and Kenya Kwanza team to come clear on the pledges they made to Kenya and be truthful to tell Kenyans that it's not going to happen. So that hostility has been emerging by some regions already feeling that they were left out. The other context is Ruto Raila handshake and Ruto the talk of Ruto Raila handshake is been seen as one of the probabilities probable outcome of the of the bipartisan talks that is going on and i think in the next couple of uh, in the next few days a report will be presented to ruto and raila so the outcome of bipartisan talks is what will show us whether there is possibility of a handshake or not so those are three contexts that have been going on and that is why i want now to point out clearly this debate seems not to be ending on William Ruto's camp or despite of president even talking about it the president William Ruto has not given it a finality and neither Rigathi Gachagua has not given it okay to William Ruto him saying pulling the nationalist card on saying everyone will be developed is actually the right thing because that's what the country expects but I've always been saying it's just poetic talk because it's not put into action. But Rigathi Gachagua 
the Kisumu outburst, the fact that William Ruto made the saying it's primitive and backward, the Kisumu outburst did not put it together. Kashoka did not put it to finality. And now in this podcast, I want to explain for you in details why this has emerged as a big concern. Number one, um, this shareholding debate, Mount Kenya or Rigadi Geshagwa camp, are actually using it to set a debate for 2027 power sharing deal. Let me tell you, as we speak, um, and, and Ruto and Rigadi knows very well that from 2024 next year, the 2027 campaigns are going to intensify. You know, they are going to ongeza tempo kidogo. And so, what the end game of this debate is, William Arigate Geshagwa team taking stock of what did we, what have you gotten from William Ruto, from Kenya Kwanza government. And in the context of 2027, I am seeing a probability that Arigate Geshagwa team might change and want some guarantee on 2032. Or what will be on table is that Mount Kenya, Rigadi would want Ruto to declare supporting him in 2032. If they to support him again. That is why Rigadi team are actually holding on it. Because it will set the debate for 2027. Okay, 2027, you're giving us Deputy President. Okay, we still have the Deputy President. We have this. The we, we probably have. Um, we probably have um, the, the 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 majority land and all that. Now, when they've been talking about forty-seven percent, and forty-seven percent, the third, the fourth powerful person in the country, after Ruto, I realize I think now the fifth Ruto Musalia, then we have. Uh, speak of the National Assembly, that is Wetangula, then Amazon Kingi. Amazon Kingi did not bring even 10%, not even 5 but it's the most, the fourth powerful. So there is a high probability that Rigadi Geshagwa would want more for 2027 and that more would also include maybe endorsement for presidency. Number two, this crisis this uh, debate, the Gadi Gashagwa camp is using it to profile William Samoy Arapruto. And clearly, he's being profiled because, you know, after they stopped, after Uhuru hostility ended, Uhuru was the punching bag. So Uhuru hostility ended. Then Rain Odinga was the next person. You know, it was Uhuru Raila. It was Uhuru Raila that was the, the wall that was being used to punch. So, Raila is also seems to be exiting the stage and is supporting Kalonzo Msioka. I have those sense of supporting Kalonzo Msioka. So, Raila is out of the picture and Uhuru is out of the picture. So, what has remained? Mount Kenya politics can only thrive on antagonism. So, what is going to happen here is, in any case, they will feel that they cannot sell track record, they'll punch and blame William Ruto as the person that abandoned the region. That is it. And this is tied with the other game plan, part of this game plan, that it's creating a crisis, Mount Kenya crisis, just to gauge, do Ruto still have interest in us? Because remember that is the region that voted 47%. And there have been a lot of efforts to reach out and make inroads in other position areas. But what Rigadi Camp would want to know, and that is why they are daring Ruto to go and make that statement in the mountain. Do they still have, do Ruto still have interest in Mount Kenya? And that is why this discussion will continue. And they will look at it so that they know when Ruto goes to Mount Kenya next, is he going to mention about it? Remember, I remember he's supposed to be there, I think, the first week of November. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to read your honest opinion on this. What do you really think it's going on here? Thank you. And uh, I'm taking tea, by the way. Yes, and by the Kenya is cold. So I'm taking some tea. Send me some tea this weekend. Eh? 
yes, sent me some tea this weekend so that um, I'm supposed to go to, was it Nenyuki? Yes, I'm supposed to go to Nenyuki. Uh, that will be on Sunday. I know I'll get some good feedback. Thank you.